I, I can tell you that this was my dream. My dream was when I was very young to to explore the unknown. And it is it was I mean it is amazing. It is in in the, in the language of quantum physics, <laughs> it is called theory of uncertainty, right? I did not know, of course, one day I'll be going to Russia, Moscow, and uh, I'll be studying there. And I'll be, I'll be fluent in Russian. I did not know that I will be coming to Canada as an immigrant, as a landed immigrant, or as an engineer. And then to the native land, which is so important. I think you and I probably, we can attest, it, we can confirm this, that if the people do not enjoy the beauty of indigenous communities, beauties of native land, like where we are, mm. people do not understand what is Canada. Why knowledge matters? Dr. Manjur Chaudhary, welcome on the show. Such a pleasure to have you back here now in the Cree nation of Nemska in a beautiful evening. The sun is just setting and we just have a blast. But I have to say, I have to put on actually my sunglasses so we don't want to seem too uh, strange, but the sun is pretty tough. Right, Dr. Munju? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Thank you, Yannick. Thank you, Yannick. Thanks. Munjur. Jody, today really we talk about your experience and a little bit of my experience here living in the Cree nation of Nemska. But I think the most important part is that to contextualize a little bit is your experience because you really lived all over the world. You grew up in Bangladesh, in Silet City. Yes. If I'm right. All right. Then you got a full scholarship in the former Soviet Union in Moscow in 90. 81. 81. Yes. You started your bachelor's up to a PhD in electrical engineering. You even experienced the dismantlement of the Soviet Union yeah. with Gorbachev and Yeltsin, and ultimately you decided to come to Canada in 1998. Yes. <clears throat> and to contextualize a little bit why, because it was interesting actually for you also to stay in Russia, because there were a lot of opportunities also in terms of business, but you decided not to. And it really had an ethical reason. Yeah, thank you very much, Yannick. Well, it is always a pleasure. And you being my colleague and friend, it is an immense pleasure all the time to discuss our, uh, our past, present, and future. Yes, I was born in Bangladesh. And how nicely you have pronounced my native land, <laughs> Silhet. Yes, fantastic. Yes, Silhet is a you see, I'll, I'll come back to the connection with Silet and Nemeska. I find so many similarities uh, in my village home or the remote communities where I grew up in my early age as a young um, young boy. So, yes, I, I after finishing my high school. I, I was fortunate enough, you rightly mentioned that I got a scholarship to go to Soviet Union to study electrical engineering. And the, our country was just um, uh, got the independence from former, I would say, we were at that time Pakistan. So East Pakistan became Bangladesh. It's a long story to talk. But the purpose of going to do the electrical engineering like many of us with different engineering, medicine, physics, math, many areas of uh, uh, areas of uh, you know, specialties we, we did. Uh, but I again I was really fortunate I got the opportunity to study in Moscow and Moscow Power Engineering Institute one of the one of the most really the MIT of Russia. <laughs> yes, Moscow really. Power Institute. You 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 rightly mentioned this. So yes, and I was also in a way. <laughs> it was uh, it's it was nice that I saw the rise of Soviet Union, 
I went to in 1981 when Sweden was doing very well in terms of uh, in, the, in, in the world, in terms of the, their connection and their ideology. All those things were working very well, uh, but unfortunately, it did not, uh, they could not sustain. And uh, in 1989, you know, in 1989, uh, everything collapsed. And uh, yeah, I was also doing my bachelor, master's, and PhD. But Soviet Union, when collapsed, there, of course, there are lots of opportunities also in terms of uh, supporting this, the, the new formation of, they, they, they try to do in different ways, uh, the common, kind of commonwealth of uh, Soviet or Russia and other, other uh, provinces or republics, whatever you call it. Those are they're trying to connect with each other because they are so much interconnected, as you understand. Ukraine, Belarus, uh, and of course, the Baltics and uh, the, the, the Central Asian countries, as you know. So, Uzbekistan, Azerbaijan, and many others, Armenia. And others. So, I am definitely fortunate enough to enjoy this Soviet life. But then, when it collapsed, it did not go well. And that the consequences we are seeing right now in the world. So I decided, of course, uh, after finishing my PhD, I did a little bit of research, and also uh, I did try to do the entrepreneurship because entrepreneurship was a new concept in in Soviet Russia, as you know. <laughs> it was very interesting, but uh, and I thought it was good that uh, the the Russian and Soviet people, uh, they needed the expertise or at least the exposure in terms of business model, uh, especially the, people, the students who are former students or younger people who came from other countries, from Asia, not, uh, the Latin Americas and Eastern European countries. Uh, they needed uh, this, uh, this experience. So we, like myself, many of us, we started to do some entrepreneurial activities there, but I found out it was not possible because that did not work well. And uh, I just, with my wife, we decided to, uh, to, to get the immigration to Canada and we applied for immigration and we are very lucky we got immigration immediately. And I arrived to, Canada in 1988, as you say, and I was I lived in Montreal uh, two years. Mm. My two daughters were born there. Mm. Then we moved to Ottawa. Since then, we are we are living. We are permanently living in in in, in Ottawa. Mm. But as is mentioned, that today it is another another life. What we are enjoying, and I'm so happy that I'm joining with you at your. I would say it's a palace, and from where we see the the sunset soon, we'll be seeing. But it is so beautiful, and uh, it is amazing that only one and a half month back here it was minus thirty degrees centigrade, maybe, yeah, and then today is more than twenty, I guess, yeah. plus. Yeah. So this is amazing that we are enjoying. And I think this really also speaks to your personality because you are really a man who has an incredible ability to adjust. And you know when I saw you at the shop one eating uh, traditional food yeah. from the crease, you really enjoyed it, and for you it's really a pleasure, and you couldn't really stop. In other words, <laughs> you showed up every single <laughs> evening. Had throughout March, you had street food, a wonderful cook Emma, Alice, yeah, and um, Harriet cooked almost every day and served us outstanding food. But again, it's really special because you really lived in Ottawa. You really call now Ottawa home. Yeah. Of course, still it's city is still your home. Your, your mother and, and, and some, yeah, brought, some brothers are still um, living there. But you decided to come to the free nation of Nemska 
and now I really am, am wondering, you know, how are you doing, and how is it to live in such a unique uh, and, and beautiful, pristine place like the Cree nation of Nemska? Yeah, this is exactly that. Uh, you, you are absolutely right. The adjustment and uh, practice, and and the adjustment does not come without patience. This is this is the one thing. So imagine, in 1998, I was 19 years old, young, young boy, <laughs> young man, 19 years old, and uh, 19 plus, and plus 35 degrees centigrade. I, we, we moved to Can uh, 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 Moscow, Russia, mm -hmm. Soviet Union's uh, mm -hmm. capital city. I still remember 31st August. The first September in the morning, it was. Imagine it started already cool, and it was maybe it was not uh, snowing yet, but the temperature was totally. It's a new experience for us, for me. And then imagine day after day it becomes snow, and first time in life I saw snow. And life itself totally different, Russian life. And there, imagine, there is no language except Russian. Communicating in English, of course, uh, we speak English also, but uh, n there is no way that we communicate in English. So imagine without language, yeah. we have to communicate. Yeah. And within a few weeks, we are able to communicate in Russian. Absolutely. And you also did, I mean, did your undergrad, your, your master, yeah, and your PhD all in everything Russian. Everything in Russian language. Yeah. Yeah. So. What is amazing, yeah. and this needs to be emphasized. I do not care who is talking about what is Russia. Many people are afraid of Russia. So this, this is not the... It's I was the there. Yeah. Because, not that because I, I, I studied in Russia and I'm advocating Russia's glory or Soviet Union glory, but the truth is the, the, the power of human power there, what they did, the teachers, mm -hmm. how teacher can can teach a student. We being a teacher, yeah. being a teacher now, yeah. we can feel that when we are teaching our students, how to make them learnable, how to make them learn a human being. And imagine within two months, we become almost comfortable to communicate in Russian without any other language. Yeah. So this is the great thing, first of all. Of course, uh, I, I, I was not a Russian language student. I, I did my engineering, so I had to prepare for myself for Russian. So first year, we studied Russian language. It is a preparatory course, we call it. So imagine we did everything, math, science, chemistry, biology, ph physics. Well, biology, I did not do physics, chemistry, math. And of course, Russian language itself mm -hmm. and history, all philosophy that we all that, that we studied mm -hmm. in, in there. So, and then eventually, uh, I, I ended up writing th th the dissertation uh, when we did a PhD. I did my PhD, mm -hmm. and it is an electrical engineering. It is not <laughs> a very easy subject either. So, yeah. so that, that 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 was amazing. So. By the way, I can also explain, because these days what we are experiencing is sad news, the, the war between what mm -hmm. is happening. I was in Kiev many times. I was in Libo, or I, I, the Kharkiv. All those cities in, in, in Ukraine, so many places mm -hmm. I traveled, Zaporozhye. Mm -hmm. I did almost three months uh, uh, practicum there for the, the hydraulic power station as an electrical power, electric power engineering uh, student. Over there, so I, I I'm fortunate to see this, but at the same time, it's, it's sad what is happening now. It's very mm. sad, very sad. So I do not know, and I'm not going to go for politics right now. But it is a sad thing that our leadership of this world they fail to resolve this. Mm. This mm. is this is the irony, yeah. and many innocent peoples are yeah. are suffering. Yeah, I think this is so important, and ultimately, in any case, there are always the, the innocent, ordinary people who ultimately suffer. Yeah. And 
the political decision makers they don't at all. Yeah. And when I talk to taxi drivers in Ottawa, for example, how they suffer. Yeah. Families, you know, when the food prices just peaks like this, 20%, 10, 20, 30, 50% up. This is really, this is really, really sad to see. And, but we don't talk about those consequences yeah, no. it has. We just talk about uh, this uh, big talk and, you know, why we should do it, why we should punish one uh, party or another. So this is really the sad news. But let's go back and really talk about, like, the beauty. Because why we are here, it's really to share your passion for living and working here in the this Green is, Nation. This is a very important point. Yes, so I, I can tell you that this was my dream. My dream was, when I was very young, to, to explode the unknown. And it, is, it was, I mean, it is amazing. It is, in, in, the, in the language of quantum physics, <laughs> it is called theory of uncertainty, right? I did not know, of course, one day I'll be going to Russia, to Moscow, and uh, I'll be studying there, and I'll be, I'll be fluent in Russian. I did not know that I will be coming to Canada as an immigrant, as a landed immigrant, well, as an engineer. And then to the native land, mm. which is so important, mm. I think, you and I probably, we can attest this, we can confirm this, that if the people do not enjoy the beauty of indigenous communities, beauties of native land, like where we are, mm. people do not understand what is Canada. Yeah. Canada is yeah. the biggest country, well, second biggest country yeah. after Russia, by the way. I was in, in the biggest country before in the Soviet Union. <laughs> Even Russia is still bigger. And, and then Canada. So, 1,200 kilometers away from that's Mon a step, Mo Montreal. That's a step back, Dr. Munro. Yeah. That's from the biggest country to the second biggest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but what I'm saying that there are two important things I'm telling you. I was always looking for authenticity. I was this morning. I was reviewing my the the core values that I want to. I want to nurture. I want to continue the values that I have. I want to be careful that I do not. Uh, do not get out from from the, from the direction that I have taken for my life, and one of the most important part, the authenticity. Look, <laughs> it, it, it is exploring the authentic purpose of being on this earth. So, if we want to understand the authenticity, we should come where we are. This is this is one of the greatest thing I think you and I at least we are doing it. You are from. Switzerland, and I'm from Bangladesh, you know, to contrast, you are from Europe, I'm from, you know, South Asia. But the beauty is, and what is I'm understanding over and over again, that the beginning is the same. I see, you see, you mentioned that when I go to Shaptan, or they call it uh, the... the, the, the Shaptan. Shaptan exactly, yeah. is the place where community people gather together and get feast or, or mm. food together. I found so much similarities that we had back my uh, my community back when I was growing up as a young boy, you know, when I was, or, or, I mean, when I was in elementary school, high school, I already, I went to the town, but I'm talking about the similarity and the authenticity, the simplicity of human communication. See, the, the, the other beauty what I see, of course, you cannot find any, well, you, there are many, very few places in this world right now, the free of pollution. <laughs> there is no pollution here. Mm -hmm. This morning, I'm telling you, this morning, I around 8.15 or 8.30, I went out from home for morning walk. Believe me, I thought I am on either on the moon or on the Mars. Truly, because I didn't see anyone. It's just quiet, no one there, no human being except myself. I'm sitting there, and I'm on the lake. I see the water. It's just calm, you know. 
there are maybe some fishers going, flying somewhere. And I, I just reminded me because through, uh, we saw in the television, right? The the when the the cosmic uh, the ship are going there. Uh, uh, when when on the Mars, the 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 the, 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 uh, the equipments are there. When when we see that. We do not see any. Only we see that one one uh, cosmic uh, uh, equipment there. This is what we see. But here, I saw the almost the same thing. There is no human being here. I'm, I'm there, and it, beautiful everything. Beautiful the sun is rising and sunrise and uh, you know water and and this. So this is one thing. Second thing, and finally, I I I was seeing that someone is coming from far. One young man is coming, and I started to oh, say hello, good morning, and he was so happy that I'm talking to him, you know. And we discussed. Uh, we, I didn't know him uh, before, and but, but we became friend immediately. The way how he communicated, he was happy to welcome. He is the native, uh, you know, native uh, native person here, and he was welcoming me. And uh, he, uh, I feel that. We have found friendship, you know. So, on the other hand, at the same time, what we are also feeling that we are learning every day from each of our colleagues in school. We are seeing our ch the children who are uh, the students who are teaching. They have their own way of lifestyle, and we are trying to tend to learn from them and to and to show how. We came from other nations, other countries, and how to share each other. This is all about the beauty of Canadian diversity. We call it mm -hmm. right. So beauty is is the interculturalism, right? Mm -hmm. It is not multicultural. It is interculturalism. It's active because everybody learn from from each other. Mm -hmm. So again, the Nemeska has definitely. Another, I think it's an unique, as you mentioned, it is a unique beauty here. Because all of our houses where we live, it is surrounded by a lake, right? This, it is, it is a dream place to live, right? Dream, first of all. Secondly, we are, our school is the main center here. We are almost, the, the, this, this town is a, a school center, I would say. The parents, students, and we teachers all are thinking how to make this school a better place so that children, parents can get the best out of this school. And I think you and I and my other, other colleagues who are here, they all are committed to mm -hmm. make it happen. Yeah. So the, yeah. Yeah, and really you just chose a shared actually just two days ago when you came back from goose break and actually on Monday we start again school. Yeah. So we had goose break and you really said like you were so happy and so excited to be back. And um, you really found almost like a second home here. Well, a third home, I would say, yeah, yeah. because Silla City and then Ottawa and now here. And um, it might be even tough for you actually to leave because you... You made so good friendship here, too. It's really I I, I I mentioned to you, and it is I think I'm gifted. I, I got this is my gift uh, that I enjoy friendship. I'm I'm always hungry <laughs> to have friendship, hungry for human being. You know this is why, and especially. If human being, they are also looking for authentic the reason of being on this world. So my core values, as I mentioned, is authenticity, honesty is the best policy, right? Honesty and exploring the unknown, exploration. This is this is this is the most important part for every human being. We need to give something to this world, whatever we have. And we teacher are lucky, you know, because we are sharing our knowledge, we are sharing our experience with our younger generation. So therefore, 
I feel that it, the place that I we have chosen, including yourself, to work, how many years we do not know, but it is the right place to do it. It's the right place to do it. This we can make a true success model that can be a role model for many other communities, many other countries. This is what, what my dream is. Maybe it is too much, but this is my dream. Because this is small, this is manageable, mm. and we can, by, by being together, putting our all efforts and, 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 um, and our exp whatever uh, experiences we have, if we sh share with our teachers, our colleagues, friends, and of course, uh, share, uh, giving it to our ch students, we can make a difference. I mean, that's a really good point, and that's really basically succession, right? I mean, what they have done so far, it's really remarkable. I mean, this community moved about, you know, a couple of decades ago here to Nemska, and, you know, what it has accomplished is, is truly remarkable. When you look at the infrastructure, like how everything is built, the school, um, you know, the restaurants, the businesses, it's really lively, and it's a, it's a it's such a beautiful place to be, live, and work, and really um, build something. And I think uh, it's it's truly a privilege to live in this community because everything really is remarkable, let alone the infrastructure. From my in my view, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, as I say, and it is also an extra point to add here. You see, what is of course, 21st century, it, we, we must recognize that we cannot live the way how we live 100 years back. This is impossible, right? We need technology. Technology, yeah. And I think really it was like the leadership here really does a really, really amazing job. You know, with uh, Chief Clarence Sholley and, and all the people involved. It's impressive. So... What do you think? How long will you stay here? Will you ever leave this community, <laughs> Dr. Monjour? <laughs> I, I, as I say, it, it, I, I told you that I'm becoming more and more connected with the community because uh, I find the authentic uh, beauty that I've been looking for, the people's inner love, and I became very good friend of many of the community members here. Mm -hmm. I even miss when I was in Ottawa. So of course my students also, I miss them. They are my, ch like my children. Like your children. Yeah, exactly. so this is the one thing. But at the same time, I do not forget about the outcome of our, our work. The goal that we have in mind. Goal is to make sure this the younger people here, they can be not only a better human being, of course they want to be a better human being, at the same time we want to make them creative, problem solvers, mm -hmm. and their participation in the world, not only in Canada. Because this is what missing, I guess, unfortunately. And this is possible because there are so many smart kids I see every day. They have so many. They 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 are genius. They are they have. Mm -hmm. But how to how to let them know that yes, they can do something amazing. And my goal, and I hope my colleagues yourself will join me to see that how we as a team connect them with the brilliant younger people of the world. And this is what I am I'm proud of because, uh, as you say, the network, the connection that we have, mm -hmm. and the culture that we are bringing from other nations. And learn from others. Yeah. Learn from others. We need to share with them 
and we can learn from them also. This is what I think the best thing we need to do and taking advantage of 21st century's amazing technology. This is unbelievable, right? It doesn't yeah. matter where. Imagine I can connect them with my community. Almost this infrastructure is even not better than what we have here. Some of the infrastructure is way, way uh, difficult, way, way worse than here. Well, I mean, here infrastructure is, is in my view, top. If I compare them even to the south in Canada, Montreal, you know, I, I feel it's top here. I'm very impressed. Yeah, it. so what I'm saying, when I talk about infrastructure, I, I mean by, for communication, for, for, for not online for communication, I'm talking about the distance so far from mm -hmm. other I mean, big cities or town. This is what I'm, I'm saying that mm. all those road is so good. So traveling uh, for, 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 for quicker travel from mm. one place to others. This is what I mean by this. But what I'm saying that we need to take advantage of modern technology. Yeah. So again, internet, you know, that I, I'm saying. Mm. So connecting with a place in Africa or, uh, so, or, 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 or Asia, this is very, very much simple right now because they have so good co infrastructure here because yeah. their infrastructure and so technology is very very here it's very high yeah so this is what i mean by this i mean i mean by this so but i definitely want to hear also what do you think what is your experience what well, tell me i know you are a young man but uh, i'll be happy to hear your your experience also well, I mean, for me, it's basically the same for you. It's uh, it's truly an inspiration to live here and become part of this community. What is so unique, I find, is that if you put effort into it and if you are genuinely interested, they really embrace you. And that's what I find here so beautiful. I truly find like a, a second home. Of course, always where I grew up in Switzerland, where my parents are still are living, that's always my, my paradise, obviously. But, you know, secondly, now I really feel like it's like almost like my family, a second home. You know, you go and you, 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 you skate, inline skating, or you walk, and, and people greet you, and the kids are there, the kids are funny, they want to talk, they ask questions, they are so active. I find this so lovely, and they oftentimes they are outside, really, really enjoying, you know, the outdoors, which I also did when I was young, yeah. you know, and and to me always it's very special because this was always a dream. So let's get this straight. When I was, and now, of course, it, now it's not appropriate anymore. But for us, the Indians. Like now, the indigenous people, the, the First Nations here in this context, specifically the Cree, they were always the heroes, you know, in my upbringing. So we were always imitating them and we are always playing Indians against cowboys and we were always the Indians. Because it's such a unique, um, you know, culture and that's, that's, they were my superheroes, you know. Today you have like a Superman or I don't know, Batman. And to me, the Crees, they were my superhero. So for me, it's, it's really a living a dream, and it's 100% as I always en envisioned it. You know, I always had this notion, you know, kind of how they are. And one lady, she's actually also a Cree, when I was in Ottawa, and it was a conference, I think, peace and, um, and learning. And she said something very powerful. She said, the longest journey is from your mind to your heart yes and this is so true and i think it's lisa it's her first name um, but i i can't recall her last name. i'm actually a friend on facebook so i will send actually her and so to confirm but um yeah and it's true and i i simply love it it's so pristine the nature the, the air the people um, the infrastructure and yeah of course the last two months between March and April they were kind of hard yeah. you know it gets long it's tough when it still gets 
minus 15, minus 20 degrees, and there's still like a pile of snow. That's of course it. It it is a challenge. It's, it's not it's easy, not <laughs> but overall, it's it's simply a blessing. I'm so grateful to all people really involved here in the community, including the school, and you know our friendships we have in the school, whether it's with the teachers from the south or or native born. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's truly a blessing. So, and that's what I always say to my friends in the South. I always tell them, you gotta come here, because here you can learn something so authentic that you will never ever learn in another yeah. context. It's simply not possible. And if you want to learn something about indigenous history and about indigenous culture, that's the place. There's no better way to learn or get immersed. It's so profound, and people are so genuine. If you're genuine and you want to learn, that's that. That is all it is. Yeah. Thank you. I think, Yannick, uh, uh, I should at the end. I want to tell you that you are doing an amazing job also, and you are the man who invited me to come <laughs> to this community. So I'm really, really grateful to you, and I'm confident. We have done the right decision. But now we want to challenge ourselves that we see some tangible outcome from our effort that we want to see our children here, they are happy and we are starting our exam uh, session, <laughs> you know. So we need to make sure that kids are motivated, they enjoy, you know. It's not easy, <laughs> I know. But yeah, it's, I mean, it's hard. It's always like high school, it's always tough, right? Yeah. It's whether here or in the South. Yeah. No matter where you go, I think young people today have the hardest task. You know, we didn't have to grapple with all this complexity when it comes to technology, right? Yeah, yeah. So we were playing in the woods. So that's why I was, I didn't ha have any, you know, mental health issues. I think because I was all the time outside and we were playing, whether soccer, hockey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or just, you know, as I said, Indian and Cowboys. Yeah, so this is why uh, our job would be finding out the balance, mm -hmm. an optimum path, uh, so, that, uh, uh, so that our children, our students, and ourselves, uh, we teachers, we achieve our goal. Our goal is to see them happy. Our goal is to make them, make them ready for their future, to make this world a better place. And I'm sure if we are strict with our, our, our goal, we we'll achieve it. Doctor Munjur Jodri, thank you so much for coming again. It's always a pleasure, and you know I'm I'm so fortunate to have you as a friend and to can enjoy those kind of conversation almost uh, you know on a weekly basis Thank same here so man man it is it, it is the dream <laughs> dream in realizing dream is getting true this is dr unjur jodri that's why knowledge matters i agree i agree knowledge matters yes <laughs> yeah, thank you <laughs> that's why knowledge matters